Okay, so we had just left off learning that our narrator hadn't had a shower or a bath and hadn't washed his hands. So I'll reread that very last couple of sentences and then we'll continue with the chapter um, Frizzled Like a Fritter. So perhaps I had a chance after all. The stink waves couldn't possibly get out through all that dirt. Witches of England, shouted the Grand High Witch. She herself, I noticed, had not taken off either her wig or her gloves or her shoes. Witches of England, she yelled. The audience stirred uneasily and sat up straighter in their chairs. Miserable witches, she yelled. Uselessly lazy witches, feeble, frivoling witches. You are a heap of idle, good-for-nothing worms. A shudder went through the audience. The Grand High Witch was clearly in an ugly mood, and they knew it. I had a feeling something awful was going to happen soon. I am having my breakfast this morning, cried the Grand High Witch. I am looking out the window at the beach, and what am I not seeing? I am asking you. What am I seeing? I am seeing a revolting sight. I am seeing hundreds. I am seeing thousands of rotten, repulsive little children playing on the sand. It is putting me right in off of my food. Why have you not got rid of them? She screamed. Why have you not rubbed them all out? These filthy, smelly children. With each word she spoke, flecks of pale blue phlegm shot out of her mouth like little bullets. I am asking you why, she screamed. Nobody answered her question. Children smell, she screamed. They stink out the world. We do not want these children around here. Bald heads in the audience nodded vigorously and one child a week is not good to me, the Grand High Witch cried out. Is that the best you can do? We will do better, murmured the audience. We will do much better. Better is no good either, shrieked the Grand High Witch. I demand maximum results. So here are my orders. My orders are that every single child in this country shall be rubbed out, squashed, squirted, squittered, and frittered before I come here again in one year's time. Do I make myself clear? A great gasp went up from the audience. I saw the, all the witches looking at one another with deeply troubled expressions. And I heard one witch at the end of the row saying aloud, all of them? We can't possibly wipe out all of them. The Grand High Witch whipped round and though, as though somebody struck her a skewer into her bottom. Who said that? She snapped. Who dares to argue with me? It was you, was it not? She pointed a gloved finger as sharp as a needle at the witch who had spoken. I didn't mean it, your grandness. The witch cried out. I didn't mean to argue. I was just talking to myself. You dare to argue with me? Screamed the Grand High Witch. I was just talking to myself. Cried the wretched witch. I swear, your Grand Highness. She began to shake with fear. The Grand High Witch took a step forward. And when she spoke again... It was a voice that made my blood run cold. A stupid witch who answers back must burn until her bones are black. She screamed. Oh no! Begged the witch in the front row. The Grand High Witch went on. A foolish witch without a brain must sizzle in the fiery flame. Save me, cried the wretched witch in the front row. 
The Grand High Witch took no notice of her. She spoke again. An idiotic witch like you must roast upon the barbecue. Forgive me, oh, your greatness, cried the miserable culprit. I didn't mean it. But the Grand High Witch continued with her terrible recital. A witch who dares to say I'm wrong will not be with us very long. Here's a picture. I'm sure lots of you are forming predictions about what's going to happen next. There is the Grand High Witch. And here is what I am assuming is some kind of terrible magic. A moment later, a stream of sparks that looked like tiny white hot metal filings came shooting out of the Grand High Witch's eyes and flew straight toward the one who dared her to speak. I saw the spark striking against her, burrowing into her, and she screamed a horrible howling scream, and a puff of smoke rose up around her. A smell of burning meat filled the room. Nobody, let, nobody moved, like me. They were all staring at the smoke, and when it had cleared away, the chair was empty. I caught a glimpse of something wispy white, like a little cloud fluttering upward and disappearing out the window. A great sigh rose from the audience. The Grand High Witch glared around the room. I hope nobody else is going to make cross me today, she remarked. There was a deathly silence. Frizzled like a fritter, said the Grand High Witch. Cooked like a carrot. You will never see her again. Now we can get down to business. Here is the picture. There is the empty chair and the rest of the witches. And that is it for our most exciting chapter yet. Our next chapter is called Formula 86 Delayed Action Mouse Maker. It sounds interesting to me. Um, and here are your comprehension questions for this chapter and for your bonus points this week. Um, thinking back to the beginning in video one, um, the first question I want you to, to describe the Grand High Witch. Tell what she looks like. Um, our narrator gave us a good description. Number two, why does the narrator think the witches might not be able to smell him? Um, that's at the very end of the first video. And then our third question is, why does the Grand High Witch fry one of the witches? And uh, that happens in our second video. So make sure you watch both videos for this chapter. Um, feel free if you have any questions about what's happening in our chapter. Or even if you want to include a prediction. I'm happy to hear them. Um, and uh, remember to submit your bonus points. Um, this video and uh, the questions will be due on Tuesday of next week. Um, so Tuesday next week, uh, anytime during the day, you can send those to me for bonus points for next week. And um, I will make sure that you get um, the next video on Tuesday as well. So um, let me know if you have any questions and feel free to rewatch any parts that you need. Thanks, guys.